All right, so ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Impromptu Q&A for April 18, 2022. I'm on my late stream, and our idea was that now that I've beaten Kirby in the Forgotten Land, that what I'm going to do is alternate between Game Pass games, that every few nights you guys will vote, and a game that wins a poll will be played on the late stream. And there was a bunch of games eligible, five completely different styles of games, <clears throat> excuse me, eligible for tonight's stream. Overwhelmingly, by like, I think it was around between 10 to 15% of the vote, uh, Outer Wilds won. Now, I've played Outer Wilds before uh, for about an hour to two hours, and it's an open, open galaxy space exploration game where you're just going to these empty planets and you're trying to find clues on what's going on, what happened with this alien race that I guess was there before you. And then every 22 minutes, the world, the whole galaxy goes supernova. And Or if you die, basically it's like Groundhog Day where zoop, it just resets. So it's an ongoing mystery. I think the game is actually interesting. The problem is it just doesn't seem to fit the format of what I do on my streams. For example, people were tagging me here, trying to talk to me, and I couldn't talk to them because the game is timed. So I'm rushing, like, oh, I got to pay attention, <clears throat> you know, and I can't not, I can't wait, to, I can't talk to anyone, you know, because I have to, 20 minutes, everything runs out. So I'm running through a, a base that I landed in. I'm reading all these logs and trying to rush through to do it, and I'm running out of time. And I'm like, well, I can't do this. I can't interact with my audience if every 20 minutes the game resets. Then I don't have time to do this. I think that this is a game that, like, if you're playing it yourself, it's a chill fun. But for a streamer, how are you supposed to have an interactive stream with your audience if, if you're timed and you're trying to rush to do everything, you see? So I don't know why overwhelmingly there were so many votes for it and people weren't interested in it unless people were just being dickheads about it, which is maybe what it was. Um, but it's a dud. So I only played it for about 45 minutes and I said, well, that's that. Uh, it's still a good game. I don't think it's a bad game in it by any means. I just don't think it's a game that fits my style of, of uh, content. So, tonight we're doing impromptu Q&A. Now, people are trolling me and typing I am fish constantly into the chat, which is great. I want to play I am fish. However, it wouldn't make sense to play it tonight because if I switch to I am fish right now, there's people who like I am fish who would have been here if it was I am fish on the stream and they didn't come tonight because they didn't know I am fish was going to be played. So that wouldn't be fair to them to then miss out on an I Am Fish stream and then they'd probably be angry and upset that we did that. So <clears throat> what we're going to do... <clears throat> excuse me. What we're going to do is we're going to have another poll that's going to start when I come back from my day off. Tomorrow's my day off. When I come back on Wednesday, we're going to have a new poll. And the new poll is going to be what's the next Game Pass game. I Am Fish will definitely be in the running, but there'll be some other games too like Serious Sam 4, uh, One Piece Pirate Warriors 4. You guys will vote. And whatever wins that vote will be the next game. Okay? So... Okay, and by the way, I Am Fish is definitely going to be played eventually, regardless. I want to play it, so. Okay. Swaggin says, I mean, Outer Wilds worked the last time you played it, but no, actually, Swaggins, here's the thing. If you remember, last time that we played Outer Wilds, I played it twice. The first time I played it, it was during a Game Pass exploration stream, where we were only going to play each game for about 45 minutes to an hour anyway. So it was like an intro taste to see what the game was, and then that was it. The next time we played it was during a Game Pass Marathon event, when again, it was only going to be played for like 45 minutes to an hour anyway. So it wasn't committing to trying the game out full length. You see what I'm saying? So you say, oh, it worked. Well, did it really? It was more, it was like, okay, we know that this is going to be digestible and it's only going to be like 45 minutes to an hour, as opposed to, oh, now it's going to be a full length playthrough, you see? So I don't actually think it works as a full length playthrough. It's just something if you you're giving it a go and you want to see what it is, okay, cool. But once you see what it is, like okay, it doesn't really fit anymore. You see? Okay. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, I will now open it up uh, to open Q and A for the night. Okay. All right. Let's see here with what's going on here. Derek says, speaking of Ask the King, when will you send a tweet for Twitter questions? I love sending Twitter questions for the show uh, as I'm setting up for it. And usually I start setting up for uh, Ask the King, you know, between 11 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. And uh, then I'll t tweet and I'll let people post up for like an hour and then I'll pick the best tweets throughout that hour. So that's when you should be on the lookout. Nathan says, I platinum Assassin's Creed Odyssey and I'm wondering, have you ever experienced a game-breaking glitch to stop you from continuing the game? Assassin's Creed Odyssey? No. Other games? I mean, yeah, but I don't think there's ever been a playthrough where, like, the entire playthrough was ruined because of a game-breaking bug. Usually, the, the bug is stupid, and then I get around it sometimes, right? Like, if you remember, perfect example, Dying Light 1. I'm halfway through the game. All of a sudden, all my, my points, my experience points are gone. 
I have zero upgrades. I'm a level one again. Now, how the hell am I going to actually succeed in this game at level one? Obviously, I'm not going to, right? But then what happened was the game glitched and gave me all my points only in one skill tree, the parkour skill tree. So I was able to max out parkour and I started at level one at everything else. So that's what I mean. When I get bugs like that, usually they don't ruin my playthrough, but they just make the playthrough really weird or different. I don't think I've ever experienced a situation where I was playing a game and then all of a sudden uh, a bug ruined the playthrough and I could not continue. I don't think that's happened, has it? At least for a major game. Does anyone remember? I don't know. <clears throat> okay. Please tag me in the chat with a question for tonight's Q&A. That's the way that I know to pay, to, to pay attention. Clay JT says, can we have the next poll right now? No, I don't want to do it right now. I'm going to do it on Wednesday morning during the pre-stream podcast. We'll do it live. And so the poll will run for about a day and a half. I don't want to have it going for like 100 days. Derek says, how am I enjoying all the new video game releases? Well, Lego Star Wars is relaxing, fun, and it's actually a really... Uh, a really cool way for me to go down memory lane when it comes to these Star Wars movies because a lot of them I haven't seen in a million years, like a really long time. Um, <clears throat> admittedly, it is still kind of like the old Lego games. It doesn't feel like anything new. It's like a collectathon, right? So the collectathon is a collectathon. It's going to be chill fun. I, there's not really much challenge. If you die, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Like, there's no risk in the game. It's more like relaxing stuff. I still like it, but definitely it's for a certain kind of audience that aren't looking for any kind of a game that has a structured gameplay like a regular game where you have to ha actually have skill checks and pass said skill checks to continue this game is just kind of ma mindless stuff but it's still fun what i like is, is finding all the hidden stuff and discovering it it's kind of neat outside of that there's no new releases that's the only new release i'm playing right now so uh haseo says hey, scroll up the screen how's summer looking gaming wise it's terrible <laughs> summer looks absolutely terrible the other day, during my break, there's a fucking jet coming over my house right now or something. The other day during my break, I updated the game release schedule. Okay? Did you hear that? That's the loudest thing I've ever heard fly over my house. I didn't see nothing. By the time I got up, it was already over. What the fuck? It was so loud. Jesus. All right. Anyway. So, the other night I had a chance. I actually did up, up, update the game release schedule. And you're talking about the summer, right? Well, summertime is typically June, July, August. In June, we got Mario Strikers Battle League, The Quarry, the Capcom Fighting Collection, and Fire, em Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes, which is a Musou-style Fire Emblem game, and Cuphead the Delicious Last Course, that's all in June. In July, there are zero releases. I'm not kidding, none. In August, we've got Two Point Campus and Saints Row, and that's it. That's all that we know right now. There's been completely uh, an empty, completely fucking empty uh, schedule. Completely empty schedule. So without knowing what's coming up in the summer, I can't comment on it. What we need to do is we need to have these digital events happen, which they're probably going to happen sooner rather than later. Uh, we're going to have these digital events that are going to explain what's going on with game releases. And since there's no E3 this year, they're probably going to happen whenever. You might have one with you know, May, June, and then we're going to start getting release dates. But right now, there's nothing going on right now in that regard. You don't even know what's happening. So, What's up, Yoshino Lover? He says he's just coming by to stop by. Tonight, and he's wondering how I'm liking the new intelligence build in Elden Ring. For those who didn't see Elden Ring from earlier today, I was doing one of the NPC quest lines for an NPC called Gold Mask. And in order to do it, you had to actually have an intelligence build to cast this certain incantation. So I respect my guy to have 71 intelligence. Previously, he had like zero or like five or something. So now I have an intelligence build and I'm using a dual wielding intelligence greatswords, um, which are neat. 
But at the same time, they're not as powerful as the weapons I was using previously. Um, they're still kind of neat. I killed a boss with them today. I killed a, probably the hardest worm, magma worm in the game, in the final area. I thought it was uh, it was fun to use them, but I don't know if I'm going to use them for the whole game. I'm probably going to end up going back to my other build at some point. So, But anyway, yeah, intelligence build seems interesting. My problem is I can't use sorceries because I would have to take a fucking staff and level it up, right? Just like you need a, uh, what do you call it? A, um, uh, what's the item you have to hold to do incantations? Now I can't remember what it's called. But I have to use a staff, same thing with sorceries, and level it up. But I didn't do that yet. I could, and I have a ton of sorcery spells, but I just haven't messed with it yet. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Would I be interested in playing any games like Civ 6? Uh, I don't know much about it, honestly. I don't know much about the Civ series. I haven't really played it. I don't, you know, I, I assume it's one of those real-time strategy games where you probably build your own city or your own civilization with different things, resources that you need for to have them to work, but then you probably have to build an army and try to take over other armies. I don't know. I've never played a Civ game before. I used to play real-time strategy games. I played games like uh, Age of Empires and stuff like that, but that was ages ago. I think the last real-time strategy game that I played was, what, StarCraft II? Something crazy like that. So, I, and by the way, I had to say it, I don't really think that those are the kind of games that um, are good for streaming. I think that those are kind of boring. You know, this, okay, single player kind of deal. But I don't think that's the kind of game that's going to get a lot of people excited on a stream. Okay. <clears throat> Kurt Russell says, do you think with the slow release schedule you start playing WWE by the summer? I'm playing it as soon as possible. As soon as I either finish LEGO or Elden Ring, WWE 2K22 is the next game on my agenda. I've said that many times, in fact, uh, over the last week. Oh, my nose is bothering me tonight. Haseo says, if the summer doesn't improve, will I do a retro gameplay through like I mentioned? Yes, and I, I think it's kind of like a lock at this point. I do. I think it's kind of a lock where I am going to uh, end up playing uh, retro stuff this summer. It'll be night streams. It'll be alternated with all the other stuff I'm doing, but I'll only do one at a time. Like, I can't possibly play Chrono Trigger, Link to the Past, and Mar Super Mario World all at once. That's just never going to work. I have to take them one at a time and balance them with other things. Oh, my nose is bothering me. Sorry, my allergies are acting up right now. No, not Chrono Cross Remastered. That's not a classic. I never played it for me. For me, Chrono Trigger is a classic. That's what I want to play. Stuff from my childhood. What will replace Outer Wilds in the next poll? YouTuber's Life is it eligible. Oh, uh, it could be. Like, likely we're going to have the same games, and then we'll have something to replace Outer Wilds. And what would it be? I mean, eligible right now, I'm thinking... I'm thinking, yeah, it could be YouTuber's Life. I'm trying to think of the games that weren't in there. Quake wasn't in there. YouTuber's Life wasn't in there. Cyber Elite 4 wasn't in there. But we already tried Cyber Elite 4 as a mainstream, and you guys didn't like it. You were of the impression it was too boring. Um, so we never played it again. There's another one, too. Was it Dead Cells? I think it was Dead Cells. I think those were the options. Yeah. Crusader Kings 3, I've never heard of it. Would Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl be good to start up in the summer? No. No, Derek, because we finished a Pokemon game this year, and there's already another new Pokemon game coming out later this year. Right? The new one. The actual new one. I think that remake is going to be unplayed. I don't see how I'm going to have time to ever do it. Honestly. <laughs> my nose is really bothering me, man. My allergies were fine. All of a sudden, now they're bothering me tonight. Any chance for 3DS streams? I mean, I don't even know if my 3DS works. Currently, I don't even know where my 3DS is. It's somewhere. But I haven't played anything on 3DS in so many years. Maybe it's in my bin. I have a bin over here of all kinds of accessories. I have no idea where it is or if it works. I'm not really too keen on, on doing 3DS stuff. Derek, I did not forget MLB The Show 22. It was a game that was a possibility. We talked about it over the course of the last couple of weeks. At this point, people didn't seem too interested. 
I think that could be something that we'll put into the rotation eventually, but I'm not really too concerned about it right now. Being that it's Game Pass, there's no real rush anyway. <clears throat> if you voted for Outer Worlds, you really voted for a game that's not even here because uh, it doesn't exist. Outer Worlds is a different game. It's not Outer Wilds. It's Outer Worlds is a different game altogether. And there's a full playthrough of Outer Worlds right here on DSP Gaming you can watch from many years ago. <laughs> there you go. Nathan Smith says, what about Batman Arkham Asylum? An another possibility. I have that. I bought the collection uh, many years ago. It was the Batman, tr I think the, the, tr the, no, it's the first two. It's Arkham Asylum and Arkham City collection. And uh, I have it. I could play it whenever I want. I just never really got around to it. Uh, I don't know if I would play the Walking Dead Telltale games, Jade. Those are the kind of games you play them once and you know the story. Not really a reason to go back and play them again. Like, I still remember a lot of the story elements of the original uh, Walking Dead game. Uh, uh, from Telltale. I don't know if I would go back and play it again. The sales says, will Skyrim be finished by mid to late summer? I have no idea. I, how can I judge? I don't know how long the DLCs are. I don't remember. I don't know how long it's going to take us to do everything in the game, so I can't answer that question. <clears throat> no, I'm not playing Halo. <laughs> no, we're not doing that. Yes, Kaito Files DLC for Judgment is also a possibility. All these things are a possibility. Why no Hollow Knight? Yeah, listen, Shells of Shadows. What are you talking about? Who even said, whoever said I'm not playing, I, I'm not, I refuse to play Hollow Knight. When did that happen? Just because specifically the game wasn't brought up doesn't mean that I said I refuse to play it. Like, what are you talking about? If there's ever enough demand for games like this, I will play them. Huh. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm interested in Hogwarts Legacy. Yes, I've already said as much that I'm interested in it. Where did I get the Street Fighter action figure? This thing? This deformed, flattened, pancake-style Blanca? I got from a fan. A viewer sent this to me. and said, put this in your display behind you. It's so ugly. And man, is it ugly. Look at that thing. It's flat. It's like a flat pancake. Look. It's like Blanca squatting to take a shit. <laughs> and look, it's completely flat. Something inside of it rattling around. Very nice. It's super bootleg. That's right, bootleg Blanca. <laughs> Get it back in there now. Okay, how exciting. Would I recommend buying a PS5 in 2022? Um, if you're buying it for exclusives, no. If you're buying it to have a, ne a next-gen, or I guess I should at this point say current-gen console, to get the best graphical experience out of cross-gen games, or cross-platform games, then yes. Like, since I started playing on PS5 and Xbox Series X, I think that the graphics have dramatically improved from last-gen. You're finally getting what was promised last-gen. 1080p, and for the most part in most games, 60 frames per second, which is how it should have been last gen, and they promised the world and couldn't deliver on it. You're finally getting it with these current gen consoles. If that's what you're looking for, better loading, right? Faster loading, better loading, and better graphics in general, the consoles have nailed that. Original games exclu exclusives haven't nailed it at all. In fact, failing, I feel. I feel like the exclusives are sad, and in a lot of ways, very disappointing that have been on the consoles, um, with a few exceptions. But for the most part, I don't know if I could tell you there's a system seller for either console. You know what I'm saying? There's no killer app or system seller. <laughs> no, Jim the Frog, I do not want to go through that crate of accessories over there. It's a ton of controllers, headsets from over the years. Uh, I don't really want to go through that and fuck with all the wires unless I absolutely have to. That would be a bad idea. <clears throat> What am I doing for the day off? What I usually do. Grocery shopping. Uh, pet supply shopping. Um, getting some food for, with my wife. Nothing special. We don't have it, like much or any money right now. Like Everything I have is minimal amount just for my day off. So, you know, don't can't really do much. Expand Dongs, which says, when you really think about it, Xbox Game Pass is the console seller. In a lot of ways, I think you're right. I feel like if you had a choice, uh, 
between doing PS5 or Xbox Series X, and there's no specific game on either console that you want, you might get a Series X just for Game Pass because it's the better value. You're getting new games, you're getting relatively new games, and you're getting retro games all played on that console for a monthly fee, and it's insane and standing outstanding amount of value. As opposed to this new PlayStation Plus, well, you'll get some games that are retro, you'll get some games that can only be streamed, you'll never get a new game. They're not ever offering new games with their, their program, you see? It's inferior. So I do actually feel that Game Pass is maybe the reason why some people would lean one way towards the other way. Fish Gang Puck? You mean like Wolf Gang Puck, but his name's Fish? Tip $7 says, I'm bad at adapting on the fly and doing my job, so here's some money. So you're rewarding me for being bad at my job? I guess I just should, I should actually do even worse then. Hold on. Here, since I'm so bad at my job, but you're rewarding me for doing it, I'm going to go blow my nose. Because my nose is actually legitimately bothering me with my allergies tonight. So I'm going to go blow my nose live on stream because you're rewarding me for being a bad streamer. Okay, I'll be right back. I guess you thought I was kidding. I wasn't kidding at all. My bot, my nose was bothering me. Okay. Redemption Game says, wish people would give more chances to games like Lego. Elden Ring suck people's judgments about other games. No, what happened was, all right, if you take a look at the last two months, typically early year is not super hype for games. You have a few games here and there that are kind of interesting, but they're not really blockbusters. And then when you start heading into E3 time, then all the big games get announced and then hype starts. This year, because of COVID, everything got fucked up. And all the hype games all got released within like a one-month period. Like, name another year when you would get Pokemon Legends Arceus, Sifu, Dying Light 2, Horizon Forbidden West, and Elden Ring within a three-week period. Name one year where you'd ever hear... That's like unheard of. What, are you crazy? That's more busy than the hardcore gaming season of the fall. Why? But it happened. It literally happened. Now, what ended up happening? Okay. What ended up happening was you get a situation where basically, hold on a second. You get a situation where basically uh, one game became incredibly over the top mainstream popular, right? And it was Elden Ring. It was absolutely positively Elden Ring blew everything else away because it was accessible, right? And... Because it was accessible, which I, I mean, I actually have a mixed opinion on that, and I'm going to tell you about it when I formally review the game after I beat it in about a week, week and a half here, because we're getting close to the end finally. But anyway, these games, these these FromSoft games, had always traditionally been games that people looked from the sidelines, so, oh, it looks good, looks really cool, man, that boss looks really cool, and the music is awesome, but man, I'll never be able to play that game. I just can't, it's too hard, you know? And for the first time ever, all these people felt that now they were going to be included for the first time ever. So the game exploded virally all over the internet. Social media, the press, everyone wanted to play this game. So all, people are still talking about it. Like, unprecedented amount of, of, of craziness for this game. Two months after, people are still hype as fuck for this game. Okay? And what ended up happening was, it exploded to the point where now, anything else that came out in the last two months was completely overlooked or overwhelmed, right? Right? It's stupid, in my opinion, but it happens sometimes, okay? Um, what is unfortunate is that I do feel that there's a great, a bunch of great games that have come out in the last few months that maybe they had some shortcomings or, or, or room for improvement. They're still great games. Horizon Forbidden West is a beautiful, intricately designed game. There is some problems with the gameplay reputation and the like, but for the most part, the game is fun, it's interesting, it's gorgeous, Okay? Ghostwire Tokyo is a game completely different from other games that I've played in the last few years. It's an interesting premise. It's got gorgeous graphics. It's got interesting gameplay mechanics. Is it a little bit on the repetitive side? Yes. 
Because the problem that we're seeing is that so many of these games are open world that the game focuses more on open world than quality of the content in the open world, okay? Yes, even Elden Ring is guilty of this, okay? But what ends up happening is, if you have a 10 open world games that have all come out in the last two months, one of them is the one everyone's talking about in hype and social media. That's the one that everyone talks about, and you're, everything else gets shoved under the rug. And that's what happened. So take a look at a game such as Lego Star Wars. It's the best Lego game I think they've even made. Seriously, I mean that. It has insane amounts of content. It's got great gameplay elements. It's a fun collect-a-thon for all ages, but has levels of challenge for people who actually want to challenge themselves to get more in the game. It retells the Star Wars saga. I really like Star Wars, so it's retelling the Star Wars saga, right? It's a fun Lego saga. It has a lot of positive, but no all. Talk about it for five minutes and back to Elden Ring. And that's just what's happening right now. It's not going to be forever. You know what I mean? It's not going to be forever. Um, we're, we're in a situation where it will die out eventually. What happened is the game is so long that people are still playing it and not beating it yet, right? There's people like, like me. I'm trying to do everything in the game. I'm over 100 hours now. I'm finally coming to the end. Give it like one more month. And once we get to the end of this final month, okay, what will happen is finally everyone will kind of beat it and say, okay, Elden Ring's done. What we really need is we need another big AAA release to come out that's going to be like as hype as Elden Ring. And right now, I think the one game this year is maybe God of War, Ragnarok. Outside of that, I don't know what else there is that would kind of be that kind of hype. Because right now, you're looking at the, the release schedule for the next few months, you're like, there's nothing big coming out. There's stuff coming out, but it's nothing giant, you know. Um, but I definitely think Elden Ring's hype is going to die out soon. Probably, like I said, within the next month. And then maybe you'll have people finally giving chances to other games. Um, so before we continue, because there's another shout-out to do for a tip... Uh, some people are joining the stream late and they're wondering what's going on. Like they showed up within the last few minutes and they're like, oh, what happened to Outer Wilds? Uh, we played it for 45 minutes. The entire stream chat complained the game was incredibly boring besides maybe two people. Um, I like the game, but I feel that Outer Wilds is a game for someone who's playing it for themselves offline because the game itself forces you to concentrate on it because you're timed. And if you don't do enough within 20 minutes, the whole game resets, you got to start it over what you were doing. Um, so here I was playing it and I couldn't interact with my audience. Everyone here was tagging me, wanted to talk. We couldn't have a chill stream because I had to focus on the game. And I didn't know what I was doing. I was lost. And everyone was like, this sucks. Do something else. So I said, all right, fine. It is what it is. I like I like the game. I personally feel like that's the kind of game that if it wasn't for a streaming audience, I would sit here and play it for myself to relax. I'd have a beer or a drink and I would play the game and have a good time with it, exploring. It. It's not for a streaming audience because I can't even interact with my audience when I'm playing it. So... Yeah, Slayer, I hear you. He says, I find it weird people heavily voted for it, and then this happened. Could be troll votes. Who knows? They did. You're right. It, it won the poll. It was like 30% of the votes for uh, Outer Wilds, <clears throat> and then everyone complains it sucks. <laughs> okay, so an anonymous tipper tipped a dollar fifty and says, do you have any interest in the upcoming Sonic Origin collection? It's going to come with Sonic 1, 2, 3, Knuckles, and Sonic CD. It could be a retro playthrough. Yes. Now, the thing is, I think I've recently played Sonic 1 and 2 on the Genesis Mini, right? I'm pretty sure I did. So, likely, I would have to start with Sonic 3 and Knuckles, and then I would also play Sonic CD. I, I would consider that. Yes. That sounds good to me. I don't know anything about the collection. I didn't even know about it until you just said it. But if there's a collection like that, yeah, that would be cool. <clears throat> Kevin Goldman, you're right. Maybe. He says, that's sad. I actually like the game. I voted to see it. Maybe it's offline video on demand fans that like it more. I don't know. But right, I was, people were actively sitting here saying, Phil, we want to talk to you. They were tagging me. I couldn't answer because I, I literally, I'm like, I've, I only have 20 minutes, guys. I have to read a bunch of logs before the fucking thing resets. So I can't pay attention to anything you're saying. I have to sit here and read these logs. And people didn't like that. So. <laughs> Derek says, what games is Cat playing? Right now, she's, she just told me today. That she thinks she wants to go back to, to Skyrim again. She'd been playing Skyrim all January, just like me. Um, and then we put it on hiatus because in February, that's when Horizon came out. And she started playing Horizon Forbidden West and played that for a while. Uh, and then basically didn't really play anything for a bit. She's been too busy. And now she says she thinks she wants to go back to Skyrim again. So, there you go. Yoshino Lover says, I'm enjoying your Elder Ring playthrough a lot, but I do enjoy watching everything you're playing, even if I'm not interested in the particular game, I come by to chill with you. And that I appreciate that. 
I think a lot of people get exposure to different kinds of games by doing that. It's not just about watching the game you know you like, but maybe giving other games a shot too. That's one of the cool things about being a variety streamer, for sure. Oh, excuse me. Jade, as I've said before, uh, I would definitely consider playing the classic uh, Uncharted at some point. It's been a long time. I can't even tell you the last time I played the Uncharted 1, 2, or 3. Like, it's been a million years, so I would consider doing that in the future. Slayer says, I agree, maybe try doing members-only polls for some of these games so it's more credible and it won't be voted on heavily by trolls. Perhaps. Perhaps that would make sense. Um, you know, members need some more some more perks, for sure. It's, it's very hard for me to convince people to become members these days. And maybe if I could say, hey, you're going to have exclusive control over certain Game Pass nights. Maybe that would make sense. We'll see. I'm, I'm going to make the next poll on Wednesday when I come back from my break during the pre-stream podcast. So... I'll decide how I want to do it. <clears throat> Monica says, Did I ever play Detroit Become Human? Top five favorite games of all time. It's an amazing story with tons of different and meaningful endings. Yes, I played it as a new release, and I played it again a second time to go through and pick all different alternate choices and endings. So, yes, I, and I really liked the game. I think it's a great game. Maseo says, I'm the same like Yoshino Lover. I just come by to chill and relax with you and chat. It doesn't really matter what game I'm playing. A lot of people are of that mindset. They just want to come by and relax with me no matter what's going on around here. And they're cool with that. Guys, if you're having a good time Q&A tonight, and again, I apologize that Outer Wilds was a flop, please like the stream. We're around 55 likes and climbing, but we have way over 200 viewers. We actually have more viewers than I usually have on a late stream. So it'd be great if you could like the stream for engagement purposes. And of course, if you can support the stream in any way, I would appreciate it. Uh, tips would be preferred. Right now we have 12, excuse me, $13 in tips. This is now out of this week. Probably like the this, the fifth stream where I'm not even hitting the tier one tips goal, which is terrible. It's not a good pattern. It's not a good precedent. Um, it would be great to get some more support tonight. So thank you in advance to anyone who supports in any way. <clears throat> Why would I have a thought on Final Fantasy XIV's expansion when I've never played Final Fantasy XIV? Can I play Blood Omen 1? No. I don't know what that is. So, no. I can't play it. <laughs> okay. Wait for more questions. Malcolm to the another dollar fifty says members only game pass poll is the way to go. This way trolls can't ruin it and give an incentive uh, to become a guild member. A guild member? <laughs> we don't call it a guild member. <laughs> That would be interesting if I called it join the guild. Join the guild today. Hit the guild members go. The the dark side fill the fill guild. Join the fill guild tonight and get these exclusive membership options. Number 1, drink from my chalice. No, it's ridiculous. The guild the fill guild. Anyway, um no, there's no fill guild. That's kind of silly. But thank you for the suggestion. Maybe I will do that on Wednesday. Maybe we will to to ensure there's no trolling. Uh, Ponage101, good evening. He just tipped me seven bucks. Thank you, Ponage. You've, you've tied the top tip of the night. And I appreciate that. That gets us up to $21 in total tips. Okay. Remember when I used to go through the day one DLC for certain games to see what they would nickel and dime you for? So say, oh, yes, I remember... If a new, sometimes a new release would come out, and I say, "Let's look at what DLC is available." And we'd look and be like, "Dead or Alive is the worst." Dead or Alive is the one that has like four hundred outfits day one. But I haven't played a Dead or Alive game in a hundred years. Will I consider finishing Oblivion? No, I would consider restarting Oblivion. I'm not going to resume that playthrough from like eight years ago. I'm just going to start over, a fresh one on the Xbox Series X, better graphics and everything. It would be perfect. What's hilarious is this idiot just says, I only, I'm only i only answering people who are tipping. Uh, I'm talking to people who haven't even contributed at all tonight. What are you talking about? 
Haseo hasn't contributed at all. Derek hasn't contributed at all. Kevin Goldman hasn't contributed at all. And it's fine. I'm not complaining. I'm having fun just talking with people who are being positive. That's the difference. Someone who's positive versus someone who's a negative dick. So I answer the positive person. Oh, he's only answering people who contribute. You fucking idiot. <laughs> Dunce. <clears throat> oh, let's see here. Nah, Monica, I'm not going to mess with Dante's Inferno. Dante's Inferno didn't work way back in the day on YouTube, and it probably wouldn't work now, so there's no point in even trying again. Plus, I'm not interested in it. It's an old-school clone of God of War. It's not even that great of a game, so... Uh, Jade, I've never played the Shadow of the Hedgehog game, so I couldn't say I'm a fan. I've only played Shadow in Sonic 06. That's it. Oh, Slayer, I don't know anything about Project Eve. He says, what are my thoughts on Project Eve, which was released last year from Korean Studio? I've never played it. So I don't know anything about it. Nope. Dark Side King asked, did I play a lot of Mortal Kombat back in the day? Like I did Street Fighter. What were your thoughts on early MK games? Uh, the early MK games ended up actually at one point being more popular than Street Fighter, but their popularity was very fleeting. And what I mean by that is Mortal Kombat 1, 2, and 3 um, only spanned about a three-year time period, if I'm remembering correctly. And then Ultimate oh, MK3 probably pushed it to like maybe four years. And I would say that in my local arcade, you had people who played Street Fighter, people who played Mortal Kombat, people who played both, but there were definitely distinctly people who only liked one or the other. I did play both. I liked playing both because it gave me a variety of stuff to do rather than only playing the same games over and over. Um... And a lot of people like Mortal Kombat just for the gore, even though the gore was so silly. The thing is, when you watch Mortal Kombat the first time, you're like, oh, it's gore, look at that, fatality. And when you've seen it the 10th time, the 20th time, the 100th time, you're desensitized to it, you don't care about it anymore. You play Mortal Kombat, you don't even see the gore anymore, right? Like, it's not a big deal. Um, the thing was, with Mortal Kombat, I, don't, I just don't feel like it was as well designed to be competitive like Street Fighter. For example, Mortal Kombat 1 is an insanely unbalanced game where, like, two characters dominate. Mortal Kombat 2 is even worse. Melina and Jax. Like, Mortal Kombat 2 is Melina versus Jax. That's the whole game. No one else in the game actually is, is, can play on their level. It's a game of two characters. That's the whole fucking game. Um, sad, but that's just how it was. Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 added some uh, interesting things like a run button. That kind of made it feel more fast-paced and more similar to Street Fighter, but at the same time, still... It didn't really hold a candle competitively. They were good games. I enjoyed playing them. But I never, for example, I never entered a Mortal Kombat tournament. I wouldn't even care. I, I would much rather play Street Fighter competitively. You see? Derek says, I really used to love your release day unboxing videos. What were some of your favorites? Oh, man. Yeah, you know, that's hard to say. I have to think about some of the collector's editions and things I've done over the years. I would definitely say one of the better ones from early on was Fallout New Vegas, which you opened it up, and not only did you have a deck of cards, you had that cool, it was the, the, the chip, the poker chip or the casino chip, and that's actually a critical part of the story of the game. That was really cool that it came with that, and then you, then you have cards of all the different characters in the game, a whole deck of playing cards, right? pretty neat um but i'm trying to think what else like dude do you guys remember you probably will not remember this the afro samurai game and you open it up and there's an advertisement and a coupon for church's fried chicken on the inside just think about this have you ever bought a video game opened it and had an advertisement for any kind of fast food on the inside let alone a coupon and what were the chances they decided to do a tie-in with fried chicken inside of a game called afro samurai I, the balls on those motherfuckers, the balls, that would never happen today. Today, if they did that shit, people would be like, that's the most racist thing we've ever seen, but this was a, over a decade ago. <laughs> that was remarkable. <clears throat> those are just some of the ones that come to mind off the top of my head, so. You're right, I did react to that during my retrospectives, I remember, Yes. No, I'm not going back to Kirby. I beat it. I beat it. I didn't beat the final extra, 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 over-the-top difficult boss, but there's no reward for beating it, and there's no e extra ending. I saw the whole game. There's no reason to ever go back to it. That was February 4, 2009, says Derek. Yeah, a long time ago. What was it, 14, 13 years ago? 13 years ago. 
Final Fantasy 15 had ramen? No, it didn't. Did it? Was there a collector's edition that had ramen? I don't know. I didn't get a collector's edition of that game. What are my hopes and expectations for Alan Wake 2? I wanted to still have the kind of mystery element and suspense element that the first game had, but I would prefer more horror too. Like, I feel like the first game started off creepy when you didn't know what was going on. Then is the more of the plot you understood, it got less creepy by the end. And then by the end, they were literally just trying to uh, throw enemies at you like crazy amounts, right? Um, but I would like it to be more scary. I like, I like, I would like it to be a lot more scary. There you go. I've never seen a church's chicken in real life. No, I've never seen one. Carrie, here's the deal. Carrie is asking, is it okay to use mean, use mean names like Baxter, Carlos, Bernstein, etc., as long as it's not doing malicious trolling? The problem is, when one person does it, then another person, who's a very boring person, copies and copies, and the next thing you know, you've got 20, 30 of these fucking accounts in the chat, and everyone is one of these dumb memes. I don't even know, where the, I don't even know what Baxter is. I have no idea what that meme is. I don't get it. Baxter? Who was Baxter? I don't even remember a Baxter from the stream chat. Somehow it becomes a meme people want to copy, I guess. So that's the thing. If you, Oh, okay, there's two of them in chat. Big deal. Oh, wait, now there's 12. Now there's 20. Now there's 40. It's like the ants in my fucking house downstairs. If you let two in and you don't do anything about it, all of a sudden you get double exponential growth. So that's why I don't like having the whole chat be derailed by dumb shit like that. When will there be another feasting with the king? Likely whenever we decide to do another marathon. I have no idea when that will be. Baxter is a racist meme. I don't know anything about it. Is that where it comes from? Clyde Baxter? It comes from him? See, I don't even know that that's what it is. I don't know where these memes come from. 90% of the time, I not, have nothing to do with them. I don't know. I don't care about them. I don't care about the memes. I just don't. I'm, you know, I'm not here to meme with you guys all day. I'm here to have fun with games and chill. <clears throat> Do I remember Samson from Dragon Age? No. Doesn't ring a bell. Would I replay any of the little Big Planet games? I don't know. On a whim, maybe someday. But do you guys really want to see me replay them? I didn't even play the latest one. Remember, it was a launch title for PS5, and I thought it was way over expensive to be like a launch title for like 60 bucks. And so you guys said, well, just wait. Well, I waited. It's now a year and a half later. The game's like real cheap. You get it for like 20 bucks, and still no one wants it. So why would I play the classics if no one even wants the modern? <laughs> you know? <clears throat> Project Eve is an action-style game with graphics like Nier Automata. It's still in development. Oh, so it's not out yet. Gotcha. An anonymous tipper to me, $2.50 saying, why don't members have exclusivity benefits for polls and such? That seems like a given if you're expecting people to join up for the 400 goal. They do. Like, for example, when we do things that are special events, and here I'll give you an example, we've done viewer's choice in the past. And when we have viewer's choice, the members themselves get to nominate a game for the final poll. They skip the whole preliminary nominations process and having to go through competing with everybody else, and they get to nominate their own member's game for the final poll. Um, we've done that similarly with, um, what was the other thing we did it with? We did it with two different things, two different styles of polls. We did that, and we gave the members exclusive rights. Uh, for Ask the King coming up this Thursday, members are posting up an exclusive poll, or excuse me, exclusive thread right now, and those questions have priority to be answered on the show, and likely most of them will get answered on the show. We already have that in place. It's just that this was the first time we were doing anything here with uh, game pass stuff like this is a new idea to put into the rotation and it didn't occur to me to do anything with members like that we could maybe try it for that later this week we'll see derek is asking am i looking forward to the isle of big snacks dlc in bug snacks yes and no yes because anything new bug snacks will be neat no sadly because uh it's only three hours long so it's going to be fleeting it's going to be like oh i gotta play bug snacks again i boot it up we catch a bunch of new bug snacks and it's over <laughs> the shit Damn, I wish that there was like actually a lengthy campaign being added. It's not. It's just a little snippet of extra content. So 
it is a little disappointing in that regard. Donnie, no, people like Sherry and Brandon are not legitimate. Are, are, okay, Sherry, I don't even know who that is. I don't think Sherry is trying to legitimately apply for moderator. Okay, I don't know. I don't think so. Um, for, personally, I'm not accepting any applications for moderator. Like, I'm not looking for one. If you haven't noticed, no new moderators have been added. So it's funny that people are like, oh, I'm interested in being a moderator. That's great. And I'm not doing anything with that. You know, it's weird. <laughs> it is. It's very weird. But I don't know. I don't have any thoughts on VR gaming because I haven't done VR gaming since the launch of the PS VR, and I have no desire to do it. If I do VR gaming, number one, it's uncomfortable still on my neck. It creates sweat inside the thing. Some games make me feel sick. And number two, I can't interact with my audience, so why would I want to do VR gaming? There's no VR gaming killer apps either. It seems like they're all perfectly missable games. I already played the Stanley Parable game, Derp General. I played it when it was a new release many years ago on PC. Played the full game. I really liked it, by the way. I thought it was a really well-written, interesting, unique-style game, but I've already played it. Been there, done that. I know it's being re-released, but I've already done it. <clears throat> Darkside King says, Do I ever feel sad looking back at nostalgic old times even if your life is better now? No. Why would I feel sad? Re-experiencing the past, it's neat. Because you get to see where you've been, you get to see how you've changed, and you get to have perspective on things. The only reason that you would be sad is if there's something that's, like, horribly missing, or maybe, like, now your life you feel isn't as good as it was back then. That's not the case for me, so why would I ever feel sad about the past? And absolutely not. Nope. Monica, I have played Naruto games before. <laughs> I have. Go look. Go search for Naruto on my channel. In my playlist, you'll find like two or three of them. Jay says he played Mortal Kombat Deception all the way up to 11. I played Mortal Kombat 1 through 4. 4 was absolutely terrible, and I stopped playing Mortal Kombat during 4. And I didn't start playing Mortal Kombat again until Mortal Kombat 9. I missed all those interim games in the 2000s. Of course I'm looking forward to the Plague Tale sequel, Haseo. Why wouldn't I be? The first one was great. It was a shockingly good game that year. Why wouldn't I be interested for the sequel? Come on now. Come on. Come on. Cruise those back roads that I missed a super chat. Oh, I didn't even see it. Cruise the back roads that a super chat and says... One time chance, one hundred dollar wings rabbit video review now. The video is over two hours long. How the fuck would we do that now? What are you talking about? Jeez, man, some people. However, what if I have something that I'd like that I can reveal to you guys right now? Something interesting. Cruise those back roads, CTV. <clears throat> what if I have something I could reveal to you guys right now? Something special, something interesting. You'll never expect it. You want to? You want to hear it? You ready? There's a warrant for my arrest? No, that's not it. You ready? Exclusive. Wow, my my nose is bothering me again. These fucking allergies are pissing me off. Oh, I gotta I gotta grab a tissue again. I seriously do. But then I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna do a special reveal. Okay, hold on. Let me get a tissue. Fuck, it's annoying. Hate allergies. Oh. Let's just say, let's just say, 
I recently had a conversation, okay? And the, the last line of the conversation that someone said to me was the following, all right? You ready? Now let's see if you can figure out who I was conversing with by this line. It was the last line of the conversation. Ready? You ready for this, okay? So the last line of the conversation was this, word for word. Go for it. Make that money. By the way, thank you, Chai, for $1.69. He says, come on. Thank you, Chai. So who do you guys think that was in that conversation who said that? <laughs> Some people are saying LTG. LTG? Does LTG say that? I don't even know that. I didn't even know that LTG says that. It was LTG? Oh, it was LTG. Okay. Interesting. It was LTG all along. No, it wasn't LTG. <laughs> it wasn't. I thought you guys would know. No, actually, so... What have we been talking about recently? What have you guys brought up on my streams recently, right? You guys have said to me that you would be interested if I did watch that down the rabbit hole video for Wings of Redemption. You said to me, Phil, this would be something we'd like to see your live commentary on and react to it because we, you know, you we talk about Wings in your chat all the time. And this would be a way for you to get, you know, uh, kind of exposure to the history of Wings of Redemption and understand the memes and everything, right? Because I don't even get them. Nine times out of ten, you guys come in this chat and you repeat the, meme, the memes and everything, all right? And I don't even understand what you're saying. I don't. I don't get it, all right? I just don't understand it. So I went to the source. I went to the man himself, and I asked him if it would be all right if I did that because I don't want to do something that he would feel would be harmful to him. You know what I'm saying? And he said, go for it, make that money. I don't know what that means, because all I wanted to do was do like reaction to his, his down the rabbit hole video. I, I wasn't going into a money-making venture over this. This was just something interesting to do, something different. But he actually gave me the permission to do it. He says, yes, I can do it. So essentially, all I got to do is confirm with Frederick Knudsen that he would let me do it. I don't think he's going to have an issue. If he's going to let me do it on my own, why wouldn't he let me do it on wings, right? Um, and essentially, then I have permission for... To, there's nothing to make it to make it not happen. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's nothing to hold it back. You see? So there you go. I got another super chat from the same guy saying, do it right now. I literally just said I can't do it right now. It's over a two-hour video. What the fuck are you talking about? Right? If I do, I have to hype it up and get as many people as watching. Okay, here's the thing. Can I be honest with you? All right? For me, this is not a hype event. This is just something different to do to break up the content. This is not something special or hype to me at all. Like, what's the big deal about the doing this? Why would this be a big deal? Seriously, I don't understand why this would be a big deal at all. Why did I hype it up? I didn't hype it up. <laughs> I didn't. What did I hype anything? I didn't even say we were doing it. What are you talking about? Oh my god! I just don't understand it. Like, I don't understand why people think that this would be like something interesting to me. I just don't. You know, maybe because I'm forty years old. You know what I mean? I'm forty years old, and I don't really care about this kind of stuff. You know. <laughs> I don't know. Pro Tuesday Zone said, I think millions of people watched it because it was interesting. You should embrace that. Haseo says, Do you think if KO Gaming was successful, your content would be different today? Well, let's be honest here. It was successful. The channel was absolutely successful. And if I'd stayed with it, it would still be successful to this day. The problem was YouTube fucked it up and demonetized it. That's why I stopped. 
what's the point of putting so much time and effort into KO Gaming if I'm going to not be able to make a business out of it because they're they're basically ripping me off, right? All right, Derek, you have a good night. Thanks for chilling with me tonight. Sounds good. Okay. So anyway, um, yeah, basically I got, Wings Wings is okay with me watching the video. I guess it would be a matter now of making sure that, like I said, like Frederick Nutzen would be okay with it. And as long as both parties are okay with it, uh, it's something that we could do as an event. I don't know when we would do it or why we would do it, <laughs> quite frankly. To me, it's kind of like it would be more of an oddity, like just kind of doing it and seeing what it's all about. Um... You know? <laughs> I don't know. See, Eternals, is this a membership thing? I don't know. Is it? <laughs> I don't know. Because you guys came up with this. I didn't even think about that. I thought, I thought you guys would be gung-ho, like dead on wanting to see me do the, the down the rabbit hole video again about me, you know? That's a video that when it came out, that guy blew up in popularity when he made it. Six million views on the video. That's insane. That's tremendous popularity on a video like that, you know? Um, and it wasn't even a dramatic video. That's the other thing. When you watch that video, it's really not dramatic. It's not like these assholes who are, who are coming out and spinning things in a really toxic way are lying. I think that's kind of why I'm surprised it did as well as it did. Six million views on a basically a video that's just kind of like facts with a few... I, like I said, if I were to watch that video, I could definitely correct a few things and I could definitely add a lot. The whole Street Fighter segment, oh man, can I elaborate on that in a way better way because he's doing it from an outsider's perspective and not understanding what was actually going on. And in fact, some of the clips there are completely out of context and not correct. And I could fix that. <laughs> you know? Um, and I feel like this would be a great opportunity to go down memory lane for me, and re-experience both my highs and lows as a content creator and share that kind of with you and say, hey, this is cool because now we can together, right, see how much different I am today. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know, like... Yeah, I, I just don't understand why people are now are like, well, forget it. Don't We don't care about the one about you. Do the one about wings. That's that's weird. You would rather have me comment on someone else than on myself. Why? I don't have any innate knowledge on wings. I can't really... The only thing I could do while watching the wings video, okay, is give you my honest take on what's going on in it and my feelings about it. I have to... When I watch that video, I'll have to judge it as fact. Because I don't know the truth of the situation. You know what I'm saying? Like, I won't actually know what's truthful and what's not. So not knowing the truth of the situation, I can't say, oh, this is what happened or that's what happened. I have to just believe what the video says. You see what I'm saying? <clears throat> so that's kind of crappy in my opinion. But if Wing says it's okay, I guess it's okay. He's saying it's fine. I guess he feels that it's enough of an accurate enough video to do it. So I guess that's okay. He's not telling me, oh, by the way, there's se segments of it that are completely false and slanderous. And, you know, he's saying just go for it, I guess. Okay? No, I haven't watched the video. I have not watched the video. That's what I'm telling you guys. I didn't watch it. I don't know why people think that I watched it. I didn't watch the video yet. <laughs> I know how long it is because I've seen it. I, I press play. Oh, here it is. It's the same because I watched my own, and I said, "Oh, there's ones on wings." And I pressed it. I said, "Oh, I see. There's a whole video on him." Oh, Jesus, it's two hours long. I didn't watch the video. <clears throat> yes, the video on me is five years old, but the video on me is the most viewed video about me ever on the internet. There's not a single video on the internet about Dark Side Phil that has more views than that video. That is the most famous and pertinent video ever made about me. All the other shit that came after is bullshit. 
All right? I tell you right now, I've watched the Down the Rabbit Hole video. Most of it is true. A few things I feel are half truths because I can add to them and clarify them. All right? The shit that comes after that video, that's when the era when everything changed. Up until that point, okay, <clears throat> a lot of the things that would that happen were truthful, right? You can't deny something that's been recorded and is on camera, right? Let's be honest. Take a look at that, that video. W what did Phil do? He made bad gameplay. He said some racist things. He was uh, a toxic guy in the Street Fighter community. This, this, this And it's all documented, right? It's literally all documented right there in a, in a video that I put out, <clears throat> right? Now, look at all the shit that came after, right? It has nothing to do with my my any video that I've put out, right? When you watch my videos, do you hear talking about my personal bankruptcy, right? Is that a major topic that I'm reviewing all personal information about myself? Is it a fucking stupid, slanderous things about fucking escorts? Do I sit here and talk for hours on end about mobile gaming conspiracies? No, it's bullshit. The difference between the original video there by Frederick Knudsen and all the shit after is that his is based on factual shit that happened, corroborated stuff. You can prove it's there because I uploaded it myself. All the other shit is bullshit fucking speculation. It's all half-truths or quarter-truths or based on this tiny little itty-bitty piece of something that's true, completely blow it up and extrapolate it to a point where it's not true at all. It's blatant fucking slander is what it is. It's defamation at its worst. Why on earth would I want to go through every piece of defamatory shit ever said about me? Why? It's ludicrous nonsense. It's a bunch of conspiracy horse shit. Why would I waste my time on that? It's not even factually corroborated. If all the things that people have said about me were true, I'd be in jail right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'd be, you know, what are you talking about? It's all fake. But people want to believe the most ludicrous bullshit. Just because somehow it was based on a tiny snippet of fact, right? It's nonsense. And it's just so si it's just so simple that why would I want to waste my time with that? There's a video out there with over 6 million views that's mostly truthful that highlights some of my biggest shortcomings of my career. And it allows me to show how I've grown, how I've changed for the better. That shit doesn't happen anymore, for the most part. There's moments of weakness, but we can go down memory lane and see all the crap I used to do and say, maybe that's why people don't like him. It's a shame that they don't realize he's changed since then, right? And like I said, I really feel there's a lot of insight <clears throat> that I can add to all of that. But most of the shit in the last few years that involves me has nothing to do with me. I'm serious. It's all bullshit. It's all sweet. People made it up. People on the periphery of my streams trying to get involved with drama and shit and I'm not involved in it. Like someone just brought up, what about OIC? What about him? How the fuck do I know anything about what that what that was? I had nothing to do with it. I'm here, here's what, what I do. I come to my stream, I turn it on, I talk with you guys in stream chat, I play games, I try to keep nonsense out of the chat and that's it. I don't have anything else to do with it. Nothing. I don't watch 14, 15 corroborating hours of drama content every day. I don't have time to waste. I'm a 40-year-old running a business that has a, a personal life. I'm not a loser who sits on the internet and is looking for drama and conspiracy all day long. I want nothing to do with that periphery bullshit. I'm, nothing, I'm not even involved in the periphery bullshit. You see what I'm saying? <clears throat> so why in the holy shit would I ever get involved in that? It's all nonsense. There's a difference between... You know what they say? You pick and choose your battles. If I pick to do a commentary on down the rabbit hole it's because i watched the video and i realized that guy did a good job he did as much research as he possibly could he exposed things that are true he summarized them all in a short video and it got six million views and most people now look at that video and say man that dark side phil guy had a lot of issues over the years hopefully he changed for the better right right all the other shit after that is all like like nothing to do with my content Seriously, just think about the difference. What? Why don't we like Phil? Well, because he said racist things in the past. Because he was he hated on game devs constantly in the past. Because he was a, a toxic person in the Street Fighter community, and the Street Fighter community kind of turned on him at one point because of this. this all these corroborating things that are from my content, mistakes I made in my own content. Everything since then has been things that have nothing to do with me or my streams. Just things that people are trying to. Oh well. Phil changed for the better on his streams and his content, so now we have to completely change the subject 
to something that has absolutely nothing to do with the streams or his content, and by the way, isn't even facts. It's just speculation bullshit, right? So there you go. Here you go. All F4. What about evidence that says otherwise? There's no evidence. There's literally no evidence of anything. There can't be because it's not true. I don't care what these idiots say. A million fake documents, a million fake pieces of data, a million fake posts, a million fake conversations. It's fake. I'm not involved with any of it. You, I swear to God, you people think that I like cloned myself and have another person out there running around being a complete asshole at all times. I, <laughs> I don't know what you think I would have time to do the shit these idiots say about me. Get out of your minds. How about this? Anything that was ever taken from my own live streams that I uploaded is obviously true. Anything else you've heard outside of there is bullshit. Speculation. It's nonsense. So why would I react to it? It's it's bullshit. I will react to real stuff. I will not react to bullshit. There's no point. Because the bullshit is a never-ending amount of... It's a fountain of bullshit, right? It's a big erupting volcano of bullshit. Just squirting and covering everything with anal ass. Ass waste, right? Who wants to be involved in that? I don't. That's for sure. <clears throat> why, why do you think that someone like Frederick Knudsen doesn't get himself involved in that kind of shit, right? He did the facts. He covered the facts. What's he going to do? Everything else is speculation. No corroborating evidence of anything. Just, oh, coincidence and conspiracy. So why would you even make a video about that? It's not true. You can't prove any of it. So why would you make videos about it? If you're, if you're someone who's a professional, someone who's a, uh, aiming to make content that's valid, you stay the path of fact. You can corroborate everything that's said in the original video because it's all right there. It's fact. It's on the internet. I uploaded it. All the other shit afterwards is not. So why would you waste time with that? Right? <laughs> Unreal. <clears throat> no, Snow, Car Snow Carly, you're an idiot. Seriously. You're a fucking idiot. What did I just say? People ignore everything I say. Said, well, if he made a recent video, wouldn't it be full of all that? No, I spoke with him. He says he's not interested in bullshit, baseless internet drama. That's why he's not making an updated video on me because there's nothing to make a video on because he's not interested in internet drama. His video was a factual documentary about my history. It wasn't supposed to be an internet drama video. You understand? But people tried to turn it into that and it's not. That's not what it is. No, take a look at the stuff he puts on his channel. He's got a documentary about Deep Blue on there that's really well researched and well done. He's got other things on there that are all historical. It's it's actual history. It's not meant to be internet drama. It's not. So what are you talking about? You're an idiot. God. Well, Yo did a dollar fifty tip and says the reason why I'm not into your down the rabbit hole members goal, it kind of feeds to a slippery slope of giving into drama. Maybe not with your video, but how people are already asking for wings and detractor videos. And here's the thing: you know I'm never going to be doing the bullshit videos. If there's something there, again, of substance, okay, wings is literally giving me the nod of approval, saying go ahead and watch the video. To me, that says he feels that it's truthful, right? He feels that there's enough there that it's a valid video that I should watch it. Maybe it, it's accurately covering his history as a content creator. That's what I'm assuming, right? Mine mostly did that. Like I said, there's a few things here or there that are worth correcting, but for the most part, it's a good video. So, you know what I mean? There's a difference there between I'm doing a docu I'm watching a documentary on stuff that actually happened versus someone who's just lying and making shit up. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Orange Cat says, any truth to rumors that Jasper is the one playing games and you must you just mime? That's always been true. Phil shit to the dollar for these says, what happened to straight cash homie? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking about. Again, I don't involve myself with this. You guys really think I'm like shitting you or something. I don't involve myself in any of this. I don't know. I don't even know what you're talking about. I really have no idea. What happened? I don't pay, I'm sure you said, oh, well, you didn't read the 14-page Kiwi Farms post about the guy. You didn't watch the 17 detractor videos about him. No, I don't know anything about it. I literally don't know what you're talking about. Zero. <laughs> mm. 
Anyway. <clears throat> yes, I know he was my moderator. And? And? <laughs> See what I mean? What are you talking about? You're an idiot. Eddie did a super jazz says, why not react to your bankruptcy recording phone call? It's factual from the court hearing. I'm sure if you did a poll of fans, rather have that. Um, what is there to react to? We all know what happened, right? Anyone who's interested in that would already have access to it and know exactly what happened, right? There's nothing to even react to. I was asked general questions in a public hearing about my bankruptcy. I answered all the questions, if, you know, as well as I could. Someone called in and pretend to be a creditor of mine, which is against the law. It's complete an utter crime. All right. Um, never been seen before, basically. Let me just say it this way. After that call went down, I had several different conversations with people in, involved in the bankruptcy process who said they've never seen anything like that happen ever before. In, in they, they, you know, years and years they've been involved. It's their job to be involved in that. They've never seen anything like that. Ever. Um, someone call in and impersonate a creditor. They're like, they're not. It's insanity that that would even happen. That any, someone would actually, you know, risk going to jail over it. The difference was this was COVID. If it weren't COVID, that would have been an in-person hearing. And if someone actually showed up and said they were a creditor and weren't, they would immediately have been arrested because there's a bailiff there. What were they called? Uh, not a bailiff. Who's the name of the guy who's in charge of the courtroom, the, the cop there? It would have gone right to jail. It's impersonation. It's 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 a misrepresentation. There's a million laws broken there. See, that's why the only reason they got away with it is because it was anonymous on the internet. But there were again, much like many things, there this world is not ready for an all digital presence. You know what I'm saying? Like there's so many processes. I tell you this all the time with banks. There's things with banks that just aren't ready for anything digital. They have these weird hours. They're closed half the the fucking time. They have these weird bank holidays and shit. But the rest of the world operates. But they're not ready for the modern world, right? Very much courts were not ready for COVID. They weren't ready for the whole world to shut down because of COVID. So they were just trying to flub it and make stuff work. And that dial-in thing was very rare. Incre incredibly very, very rare, okay? <clears throat> very rare that anything would, would be on a phone call like that or anything unless there was a really good extenuating circumstance reason. And so they just weren't ready for that. I, I mean... I warned my bankruptcy attorney of it. I said, I guarantee you there's going to be some fucking bullshit shenanigans. You know? I guarantee it. What's happening outside? I don't know. I've heard cops all night driving by. I don't know what's going on. I don't pay any attention to it. <laughs> all right, guys. We're going to adjourn in a minute. All right? We're going to adjourn in a minute. I give you guys a last opportunity. Um, My last opportunity to react at all. If you have any questions, anything else you want to you wanna end here. Sucks that... The game didn't work out, Otter Wilds. Also sucks that, again, this is like the sixth stream this, this week that was slow for support. And I don't know what to do about that. Um, I'm trying to give you guys variety. I'm trying to, to mix things up. I played the game that won the poll, and obviously it wasn't a good game for streaming. You guys didn't like it. You know, I don't know what else to say about that. Uh, besides, I'm just going to keep trying, you know. When I when I come back on Wednesday, we're going to have a different poll set up for a different game pass thing, and hopefully it works out better this time. <clears throat> Jim, I see what you're saying, but I don't know how I would even choose that. He says some people who are content creators have like a list of, oh, my favorite playlist or my most famous playlist of all time is listed like on their main channel page. Number one, I don't even know what I would put there. I, I've done so much over the years. What do you even choose for that? And number two, does anyone even really check out the main channel page that often? Besides the community tab that has postings and things and polls, I don't know if anyone actually uses the main channel page that often anymore. It, it's pretty much like maybe that would increase... 10 people's experience <laughs> you know i don't think it's that big of a deal um unless you have ideas on how i could do it thank you cracker jesus enjoy your day off take care of yourself 
Protusum Zone says, I should set a date for this video, have beers and order out, and make it a fun event. Yeah. You mean the, the you mean the wings video? The down the rabbit hole video. Like actually like make it like plan it out, have a special day for it. Order some food, rise, have some drinks and food while we're watching it together and I'm I'm reacting to it. Yeah. I don't know if it, see here's the thing. If I did that, would anyone care? And I mean this, like, would the attendance be high? Possibly yes. Would the drama be high? I'm sure idiots would try to make drama out of it. But would it be something productive for my business? Keep in mind, this is not just me dicking around on the internet. This is a business I'm operating here. That's why when this is low and the super chats are almost non-existent and it's a slow night, it actually hurts me. It literally, a night like tonight hurts me bad. Because I'm like, damn, here's a night when I was here two hours like I usually am working and it's a slow night. Like, what happened, right? And I wish that I could change. I can't change that. You know what I mean? I don't know what to do. Obviously, we had a good time here interacting. We had a good conversation or whatever, right? But... I don't know. See, ProTuzum Zone says, well, the more people watching, the more donations you'll get. I don't believe that at all. That's not a correct assessment whatsoever in my experience, especially these days. These days, I could have low attendance and still get tons of support. And then I could have a stream with a bajillion people watching and no support. I've had both, you know? In this case, you're bringing in people who are drama. You're people here for drama. Oh, I don't care. I don't, you don't care about quality content. I just want drama. That, those aren't necessarily people who are going to support you. You know what I'm saying? A lot of those people are just there for drama reason, drama sake. And I don't think, I really don't know how that's going to really help. I'm being honest, you know, I don't, I, I mean, we could give it a shot and just see, but I don't really necessarily think this is going to be something special. I Again, to me, it's just like, eh, I'll do it if you guys really want it. I don't see the big deal. <laughs> but you guys seem to think it's some kind of a big deal. I don't think so. Chimed in another dollar sixty nine tip says good guy Greg versus scumbag Steve. I have no idea what that means, but thank you for the tip, Chite. Okay. <clears throat> I'm not gonna have Wings on with me. This is not Wings video. It's my stream and my content. Wings is not gonna be on this with me. What are you talking about? Now people are really moving the goalpost. Oh well, we want to see you do the reaction to the video. Oh wait, Wings is gonna be on that with you, right? No, no. No. The fuck are you talking about? <clears throat> Jesus. I thought Wings already reacted to it. He did, right? He, I thought he already did one. I thought people had told me that, that eventually he had re actually reacted to his video and that that was one of the ideas that people had that I should react to mine. I'm almost positive that's tr that's the case, that he did react to his at one point and then people went, came to me and said, well, you're going to react to yours, right? <clears throat> I know, Jay. Yeah, Jay says you, you've changed. I know, I've been watching a long time. I know, and I've tried, man. I tried hard. You know, I got tired of being that that kind of grumpy guy trying to do the same kind of content all the time. I did. I, I like what I do today way more than what I used to do. Like, in, it leaves and bounds today what I do is more meaningful today than I have anything I, I did previous to being a full-time streamer. And I know that, too. <clears throat> That's a concern, too. Michael Kane says, you know, Wings just has so much baggage with his toxic fan base that to bring him into any stream is a huge liability. And, you know, that's what I've heard. Again, I don't, I've never watched a single piece of content Wings has put out. I want to clarify this. Not ever have I seen a piece of content he's put out. I don't know if it's good or bad. I don't know anything about his trolling level. I just hear things. People tell me that it's way worse over there. Oh, my God. You know, why don't you collaborate with him? And it's like, dude, don't collaborate with him. That's just going to open the floodgates. You know, like, I don't have it bad enough. I don't know. I don't. All I know is what I'm told. Okay, <laughs> that's all I know. <clears throat> anyway, all right, guys, we're out of time. I, mean, I went extra here tonight too. We're out of time. I got to get out of here. Got to get out of here. Get ready for my day off tomorrow. I will say this: thanks to those who stuck around and chilled with me for the Q and A. Sucks that it went badly with the game. Uh, hopefully, when we re regroup. 
with another Game Pass game this coming Thursday night. It'll be better. Uh, I think I may take people's advice, and what we may do is a members-only poll for that one. Starting Wednesday morning on the pre-stream podcast, I'll probably set it up, and I'll have the members only be voting on what's the next Game Pass game that we should do Thursday night and pick a good one. And hopefully it'll be more entertaining for you guys. Okay? All right, guys. Well, thank you uh, to those who did support, I should say. Support was not great tonight, obviously, but at least to those who did support, thank you to those who did. I appreciate that. I hope you all have a good evening. I hope you enjoyed the Q&A. Over an hour of it. Wow, almost an hour and a half of it, right? And uh, hopefully I'll see you soon. All right? Neat. Okay, cool.